Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the KitchenAid mixer or speed control assembly. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's going to take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new speed control assembly. The speed control assembly controls the functions of the mixer. The manager will be changing it out. So if it's failed and the mixer's not coming on or going to the speed you select. In order to change the part, we have to open up the mixer. We're going to take off the accessories just to get them out of the way. You want to make sure the bowl is in the down position. And then we can reach in and take off the beater. All you have to do is lift up on it, turn it clockwise, and then let it drop down. You can pull it out. To get the bowl up, we're just going to lift it off the mounting pegs and pull it out. Now we're around at the back of the mixer. We're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to take out the screw that holds the trim on. Once you have the screw out, you can pull the trim off and set it aside. With the trim out of the way, we can use a Phillips screwdriver to take out the four screws that hold the cover on. There's two on this side and two on the other side. Once you have all four screws out, you can lift the cover off and set it aside. Now that we have the cover off, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the two screws that hold the speed control board in place. Once you have both screws out, we're going to lift the board up and out of the way. We have to use a small flathead screwdriver to release the tabs that hold the little sensor in. Just have to press on each side and get them to release. Once you have both tabs released, you can pull the sensor out of the motor and then we can swing the speed control board over. We're going to bring in the new speed control board for a minute so we can show you the old one versus the new one. They redesigned this and made quite a few changes. The old speed control board has five wires and the new one has four. And the old one also has that micro switch on there, which the new one doesn't use. So if you have the old one like us, you're going to have to take the mixer apart and change out the power cord so that everything wires into the new board properly. If you have the new style board, all you have to do is swap out the wires from the old one to the new one. So we're going to set the board aside and then we're going to use a small needle nose pliers to help take all the wires off the old speed control board. First we're going to take off the motor wires. There's two of them. There's a motor one and a motor two. As I'm looking at the motor, the right wire is attached to motor one and the right wire is attached to motor two. Sometimes these are tangled up in the mixer, they do that to take up the extra length of the wire so it doesn't float around on the inside of the mixer. So we're just going to untangle these two real quick. Once you have those free, you can get them out of the way. And then we can take the rest of the wires that we need to off of the old speed control board. Next one we have to take off is the unswitched P5 terminal. Just going to lift that off carefully. Then we can follow this wire over to the micro switch and disconnect it from there. Once you have that wire free, you can set it aside. And then the last one we have to take off is the white wire that goes to the neutral. And then on this old board, we don't have to take off this last wire because it just goes over to the micro switch on the other side. If you have the newer style, you're going to take that off too because you're going to pull off all four of those wires. Once you have all the wires off, you can pull the speed control board off the mixer. Now that we have the speed control off, we have to take off the housing for the gear case. We're just going to use a Phillips screwdriver to take out the screws. Anytime you're in here working, if you have this old style plastic housing, the manufacturer recommends that you upgrade it to the new metal one because the plastic one has a tendency to crack. Once you have all the screws up, you can 
lift the housing up and set it aside. Next we have to take off the motor. We're going to use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the screws to hold it to the lower housing. Now that we have the screws out, we can just lift the motor out carefully and set it aside. With the motor out of the way, we're going to use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the grounding screw. Next, we're going to use a ratchet with a number three Phillips bit to take out these big screws. These are in there pretty tight, so you want to make sure you use the right size so you don't strip them out. We're just going to break all three of them free, and then we can use the regular screwdriver to take them out the rest of the way. As you're taking the last one out, you want to make sure you hold on to the housing so it doesn't fall. Once you have the last screw up, we're just going to support the housing and then we can take the power cord out. You don't want to turn the housing over and dump the grease out. So we're just going to turn it and carefully pull the cord out of its little slot. We can pull the wires through. Once you have the old cord out, we can put the new cord in. Just have to carefully feed the wires through. Then line the little locking tab up and push it in place. Once you have it all the way in, we can set the lower housing back onto the mixer stand. Once you have it in place, we're going to use the Phillips screwdriver to put these screws in real quick. Then we can tighten it down with the ratchet and the large number three Phillips bit. You want to make sure you get these nice and tight. You don't want them to come loose while you're using the mixer. Once you have them tightened down, we can use the regular Phillips screwdriver again and connect the ground wire to the lower housing. To put the motor back in, we're just going to carefully set it into place. Once you have it in place, we can use a Phillips screwdriver to put the screws back in. As you're tightening the screw down, you want to use the thumb from your other hand to just slightly push forward on the motor a little bit. You want to make sure you get a good seal between the motor shaft seal and the housing. Now that we have the motor mounted, we can put the gear case housing on. All you have to do is line it up and turn it over. Once you have it in place, we can use a Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Remember, if you have this old style plastic housing, you want to change that to the new metal one. We're not going to do it in this video because it has its own video, but you should change out this housing if you have it. Here's the old speed control assembly next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. Like we said before, they've redesigned this board, but it will go in and work just fine. To put the new speed control assembly in, we just have to hook up the four wires. They're labeled. You got the black one for the line, and the white one for the neutral. Then you have the two for the motor. You have motor one here and motor two here. Now remember, just like when we took these off, these wires were kind of tangled together. 
That helps keep them short so they don't touch the outer housing of the mixer. So we're going to kind of loop these all together and take up the slack. And the right one goes to motor one. And the left one goes to motor two. Once you have the wires connected, you can rotate the speed control assembly over and set it in place. And then we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Now that we have the new speed control assembly mounted, we can grab the sensor and plug it into the motor. It can only go in one way, so just carefully snap it in. Once you have it in place, we can put the top back on the mixer. To put the top back on, all you have to do is line it up and set it into place. Once you have it in place, we can use a Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Now that we have the cover back on, we can put the trim ring on. We're just going to set it in place, and we can go around back and use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screw in to hold it on. Once you have the trim ring on, we can put the bowl back on. To put the bowl back on, we're just going to line up the pins on each side. Once you have it in place, you can push down on the back to snap it in. Once you have it in place, we can put the beater back on. To put the beater back in, we're just gonna line it up on the shaft and uh, make sure the pin goes into the cutout and lift it up into place. Turn it counterclockwise to lock it on. Once you have it in place, we can plug the mixer back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by appliancepartspros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.